Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to take a few moments to discuss muscle properties, their roles, and their corresponding actions. So let's jump right in and list the properties of skeletal muscle. First, skeletal muscles are irritable, and the term we utilize to more fully describe this property is irritability. And at times, you may hear the phrase excitable or excitability to represent the same concept. And this means that our skeletal muscles are capable of being stimulated or excited by a variety of stimuli, whether it be chemical, mechanical, thermal, or electrical. Next, muscles display contractility, essentially meaning that they have the ability to develop tension or an internal force against resistance. Following this is extensibility. And it's through this term that we better understand the muscles that have the ability to be stretched beyond their normal resting length. And finally, skeletal muscles have elasticity, meaning that they have an ability to return to their original or normal resting position after having been stretched. So now that we have a better understanding about muscle properties, let's take a look at the actions muscles perform when it comes to producing movement for the body. First and foremost, we need to make note of the fact that our muscles provide us with the ability to prevent, control, and most notably, initiate movement. Now that we have an understanding about muscle actions holistically, let's take a look at the two divisions in which all muscle contractions or actions can be placed. The first category is what we refer to as isotonic contractions, and the second is what we refer to as isometric contractions. So with isotonic contractions, we have two terms that you may very well be familiar with. The first is concentric, and the second is eccentric. And for both of these types of contractions, the muscle is developing an internal tension to cause or control joint movement. But specifically with concentric contractions, the muscle is developing tension as it shortens. And in eccentric contractions, the muscle is lengthening under active tension. And isometric contractions are those in which the muscle is developing tension, but the joint angle remains constant. And traditionally, we typically hear of these referred to as static contractions. Now, there's one other term that we should discuss, and that is isokinetic exercise. Now, it's important to note that the term isokinetic doesn't represent another type of contraction or action. Instead, it is an approach or a technique in rehabilitation that leads to a variety of contractions being utilized simultaneously in an attempt to engage the athlete, patient, or client in a dynamic exercise program. And the device that you see here on the screen is designed to do just that, to assist individuals with completing these types of exercises. Now that we've discussed the types of contractions that take place in the body, it's helpful for us to discuss the various roles that muscles play when we initiate movement of the body. What we need to consider first is that when we contract a given muscle, it pulls on the bones that it attaches to. But in order for this movement to happen efficiently and to prevent injuries from these sometimes forceful contractions, we need some muscles to counteract the action of others. With this in mind, it's important to identify the various roles that muscles play to prevent, control, and initiate muscle actions. So first, let's list the primary roles muscles serve in during movement. They can serve as agonist, antagonist, stabilizers, and synergist. So when we refer to agonist, we're saying that these are the muscles contracting concentrically during a given movement. And sometimes these are referred to as prime movers. Next, muscles can serve as antagonists. And as an antagonist, these muscles are counteracting the action of the agonist muscles. So for example, when we think about a biceps curl, the agonist is the biceps brachii muscle. 
and the antagonists are the triceps brachii muscle. So specifically, when the biceps is shortening during this motion, the triceps is lengthening. Next, muscles can also play the role of stabilizers, and as a stabilizer, these muscles surround the joint or body part and contract so that another limb or body part can move. In our example of the biceps curl, the stabilizers here would be the deltoid muscle, which maintains the stability of the shoulder joint during this movement. And while providing stability to the shoulder, this enables the elbow and forearm to move with relative ease to complete the movement. Next are synergists, and synergists are muscles that assist the agonist, but they are not the primary drivers of completing the movement. In other words, they simply assist the agonist. Now, let's shift our attention for just a moment to discussing sensory receptors that are specific to skeletal muscles and tendons within the body. First up, we have muscle spindles. Now first, it's important to note that we primarily find muscle spindles within the belly of a given muscle, and they have a unique ability to sense a stretch that takes place within the body, and the rate or speed in which that stretch takes place. Now, as it pertains to Golgi tendon organs, they are heavily concentrated in the tendons of a given muscle. And it's these Golgi tendon organs, or GTOs, that uniquely sense muscle tension and or muscle contraction. So, now that we have the particulars about these receptors, let's talk about why they're helpful. Specifically, it's our muscle spindles that would cause a rapid contraction of a given muscle if it becomes overstretched in an attempt to protect the muscle from injury. And conversely, with Golgi tendon organs, if it perceived too forceful of a muscle contraction, it would lead to a stretch of the given muscle, again, in an attempt to protect it from injury. Now, collectively, we can credit our muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs in helping us to achieve what is known as both kinesthesis and proprioception. And oftentimes, these two terms are utilized interchangeably, and you'll see why momentarily. However, there is a difference between the two. With kinesthesis, this is the conscious awareness of your body and the movements it is performing in a given space. So, for example, if you were to juggle bowling pins, you would be consciously aware of the activity you are performing. And as a result, you'd have an idea of the position of your various joints while performing the task. With our neighboring term, which we call proprioception, this is your body's subconscious ability to regulate your body's posture and movement. For example, if you were walking on an unleveled surface, your body would subconsciously help you course correct by contracting various muscles of the foot and ankle in order to help prevent injury. So again, we should be thankful that our bodies have the unique ability to prevent, control, and initiate movement. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, and if you happen to have any questions, please let me know in the comments section below. And I'll look forward to catching up with you in the next video.